Hello and welcome to the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. I'm Jane King and with me today, Mark Jarvis of Cubed Labs. You're the chairman of the board of the company. So welcome. Thank you. Um, you're in a very industry, interesting industry. Foodborne illnesses, um, kind of, I guess let's we'll start with Cube Labs and then let's go into a little bit about your background in the food industry. Sure. What's Cube do? Well, Cubed in a nutshell is a rapid detection technology for essentially detecting pathogens in food. So bacteria like E. coli, Salmonella, Listeria. Uh, traditionally, those tests are done in microbiology labs that can take anywhere from five to seven days. This technology makes it possible for the first time ever to run a test from sample preparation all the way to assay in 90 minutes, okay. which is quite breakthrough. In terms of you know, that time span, when you're dealing with a perishable food, taking five or seven days out of the equation is eliminating probably half of the shelf life of the product. So this is a, a huge breakthrough. Essentially, the, the industry spends about $17 billion a year on testing food, and that, that testing happens principally in three places. One, the raw materials of food that go into the products that we consume uh, in restaurants, hotels, and supermarkets. Mm -hmm. The second is environmental swabbing in the factories that produce the food. Mm -hmm. And the third is in the finished product. Mm -hmm. Most often what happens is that samples are collected by a food microbiologist. They're packaged and shipped to an independent laboratory. The laboratory then takes literally between three to five days, sometimes as many as seven days to conduct the test, mm -hmm. and then they can deliver the results. And in many instances, companies are holding onto that perishable food under re refrigerated warehousing conditions before they ship it into the marketplace. Yeah. So you can tell this is potentially very disruptive and, and a huge advancement in terms of how we address food safety. No, it's a, it's a game changer <coughs> for the industry. So, how, so is it technology that you use or how are you doing what you're doing? It is. So what we're doing is essentially detecting DNA. So there is a very specific... Uh, fingerprint for every one of these pathogens. So for example, E. coli or Salmonella or Listeria. We're preparing a sample and then through our technology we're able to detect in very minute traces, potentially down to a single cell level. You can literally take a sample and have a definitive result that is not only more accurate and more sensitive, but clearly more timely. Literally from beginning to end, it's 90 minutes. Wow, and then what happens? It's pulled out of the supply chain and other samples are tested from the same farm or whatever? Precisely, I mean, in most cases, what would happen is if you trigger positives, you start to do further investigations. You take additional samples, you do additional testing. But in many instances, you withdraw product from market. Um, if you look at what's actually happening right now, there are three raging outbreaks happening. One is the biggest ever involving salmonella and ground beef. Mm -hmm. And in this instance, uh, 6.5 million pounds of ground beef being withdrawn from market. So the consequences of failure are extremely high. And what, what, what one really has to grasp is the fact that most raw materials in the food supply chain are inherently defective. There's botulism in the soil. When you're growing leafy greens, birds are flying overhead. You know, That's there amazing. are amazing. We're not fe feral <laughs> pigs, feral <laughs> pigs grazing in the field. Sure. So the likelihood of food being contaminated when you start this process from farm to table is pretty high. Um, so there's certainly um, a percentage of the food that is contaminated, and food science and technology like ours is there to help mitigate that risk and to mm -hmm. put strategies in place that protect the product and, and give you a higher chance of producing something that is safe and not adulterated. Okay, so who would Cube's customers be? Would they be the big food companies or? Precisely, okay. so I, I think if you look at the entire landscape, the, the producers of raw materials obviously have a need for this. The large manufacturers of food, and we're targeting the top 100 biggest food companies in the world. And then the uh, supermarket chains, the restaurant chains, the hotel chains that are the retail outlets for the food, it, it really all of them are, are potentially our customers. And is it a device that you're selling then? It is. Okay. Uh, so there's a device that actually conducts the test, and then there's a consumable, which is our test kit, and that test kit consists of principally the chip that does the actual detecting of, of the DNA, and that's a one-time use uh, test see. kit. And is that your revenue driver then? That's that, our revenue that chip. driver. Okay, yeah. so what's the future then for Cubed? So we're in the final stages of um, kind of validating our technology through independent third parties, which I think is a kind of a key element of kind of our go-to-market strategy. Sure. Once we've kind of over kind of climbed that hurdle, um, we're essentially kind of launching our product into the marketplace, having conversations with the big providers out there like Burger King, Yum Brands, Coca-Cola, Kraft Foods, etc. And the idea then is to essentially work with them collaboratively to figure out what the highest and best use is for this technology given the complexity of their supply chains. Mm -hmm. 
and that marketing effort will begin kind of early next year and we expect a pretty rapid ramp up because the industry in general has been uh, looking for this type of solution for a long time. Sure, okay, well good luck. Uh, thank thank you. you, it's a, a big issue. So if you could find the solution to that, that would be a game changer. So thank you so much, Mark, Thank for you, coming. much appreciated.